Hi, everybody. I just want to talk a little bit about Desmos.com. It's an online graphing calculator. It, do, it does more than graph. Um, it can generate tables and uh, do a lot of different things. It, it's extremely useful and uh, extremely uh, uh, nice and well-written piece of uh, software. So all you have to do is uh, get a web browser. You might have to update it. Um, it doesn't really work well with older web browsers, so you might have to have an up-to-date web browser. Um, just go to www.desmos.com and then uh, click on Launch Calculator here. And here you can see you have graph paper. Here is an area to type in expressions and, and those sorts of things. So um, one of the things you can do is graph out functions that you are, are interested in. So for instance, maybe we want to graph this x cubed minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Right. This, in one of the examples, we want to find out what happens as x gets closer and closer to 1. Right? This uh, function is not defined at x equal to 1 because when I plug it, a 1 in here, I divide by 0. So one of the things that uh, then you can do to the graph is kind of look and see what happens to this function as I get closer to 1 from the left over here. So coming in here, you can see that the graph gets closer and closer to 3 here. And also from the right, as I go to 1 from the right-hand side, you can see the graph is coming in here, and it's going towards 3 right above 1 there. So that's one way you can kind of take a look at the limit and say graphically, OK, I think that limit is 3. The other way uh, that that you can do that is with the use of a table, right? It's a little bit tedious to generate the table, so Desmos.com is really good about uh, helping you to generate those tables. You would just kind of go here, click on table, right? And then you can type your expression um, here. We want x cubed minus 1 divided by x minus 1. You can see it's telling us that it's undefined, right, uh, at 1 here. Um, but remember, the, the limit really doesn't care what's going on exactly at 1. It's as you get closer and closer to 1. So, so we can look at what happens over on the right-hand side. And you can see what it does there, right? Uh, the x value would be 1.1. And then this automatically calculates the y value for you. And then it automatically plots the point up there. So that's super nice. And then you can just make these values get closer. To 1. All of these would be over on the right side of 1 and it graphs those and you can see there those points are bunching up right here and so it's pretty easy to see numerically what's going on here as these x values get closer and closer to one these y values get closer and closer to three from the right so if you want to do it uh going to one from the left right you could just start off with say like 0 0.9 and then make them get closer 0.99 So you can see these values, right, starting here at the point 0.9, they are over on the left side of 1. You can see where those points come, come in right there. And they are getting closer and closer to 1, right, uh, but still staying on the left side of 1. So those are what the x values are doing. And then we can see what the corresponding y values are doing. And we see, again, that they are getting closer and closer to 3. So. So from the left, right, the limit would be 3. From the right, the limit would be 3, which also makes the two-sided limit, right, e equal to 3. So, so that's just an example of how you can use Desmos.com to generate the table pretty quickly, right? If you had to do this all by hand, it would be really tedious and take a long time. 
So I highly encourage you to use this when you're exploring these things numerically. Uh, later on, we'll sort of abandon the numerical away, but it, it's good for getting an idea of, of really what the limit's all about with, without resorting to the definition of the limit, the technical definition, which is extremely complicated. So.